What a wonderful God we serve, amen? You may be seated. Certainly is good to be back in town. My wife and I went to Because of the Times, and we had a great time, but that's about 30 hours of driving. And I didn't have to do all the driving. My brother-in-law, David Hyde, drove the whole way, but I had to be a navigator, sister. Take that back to my wife. I'm going to have my wife stand and give a word for the Lord tonight. You know, when we go out and preach, we do this because my wife is my teammate, and we work together for the kingdom of God. And a lot of things I do would not be successful without her. She's going to stand and give a word for the Lord tonight. Praise the Lord. I'm so thankful to be home tonight. <laughs> I enjoyed because of the times, but um, there's no place like home, right? Um, I was... I, we had a great time of because of the times, and the Lord did some special things. Um, but on the way home, I was in the back seat, and I was just talking to the Lord. And the Lord spoke something to my, to me, and he spoke um, these words, boots on the ground. And I believe that it's God's desire for all of our boots to be on the ground, for us all to be engaging in this war. But he spoke also to me that... He can't put all of us in the places that he has called us to go or chooses us to go right at this moment because some of his soldiers have been battling with trust. Um, you can't be in war and not have trust. You can't, um, and sometimes we have trust for other people's things, but those things that are dearest to our heart, it's hard for us to trust. And I was thinking about the people of Israel, how God provided a cloud by day and a fire by night and water in the rock and manna from heaven, and they still had a hard time trusting. And so because of that, they couldn't go from here to here because they had a hard time trusting. And I believe that God wants to send a revival of trusting in him because he is our provider. Yes. And in a day and age where eggs are $6 a carton, and we don't know what people are teaching our children in school. And these things, they boggle our minds down. And we can't go over here where God wants us to go to help these people if our mind is bogged down with these things because we're not trusting in God. We might not be able to change what the world is doing, but we know the master and we can put our hand in his hand and we can depend on him for everything that we need. And we can go into this war and we can fight this battle. And we can win our city. We can take our city out of this stronghold that has it right now if we just learn to trust in God. Just learn to give it all Hallelujah. to God. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that I knew who I serve. Praise God. Amen. Amen. How many know you've been distracted by stuff recently? You're not able to do what you want to do for the Lord. I wonder if you stand up for me right now. You know you, uh, you're fighting battles on every hand. You're worried about this and worried about that. Let's just pray right now. Lord, you see the distractions. You see what the enemy has done, what he tries to do every day. I pray, God, that you would give us a revival of trust, of hope in you, confidence in you, Jesus, that these distractions will go by the wayside. We put our trust in you in the name of Jesus Christ. We trust in you, Lord, with all of our heart. We don't lean to our own understanding, but in all of our ways we acknowledge you, God. And you'll direct our paths, and you'll help us, Lord, win our families. You'll help us win our city, God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. When you have full trust in God, you become a conduit of his love. You become a conduit of his power and of his anointing. And so we want that. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I want to thank the bishop. Of course, as you know, he's out of town in South Dakota taking care of some, some stuff there for their district. And we, of course, are praying that God blesses them, he and Sister Harper, and they come back home safe and ready to move forward. Amen. And I uh, love my wife. Thankful for her. Thankful for the sound team, the video team, the musicians and the singers. They all did a great job tonight. And all the men on the platform, God bless you in Jesus' name. Let's just raise our hands and thank God for what he's given us. Lord, you've given us so many blessings in this church, God. These men and women that are talented, these men and women that are anointed for you and to do a purpose, God. Continue to bless them in the name of Jesus Christ. Fill in the gaps, Lord, where there are some, so that we can be a church that's 
going to meet every need that comes in these doors. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Turn us by and let them know you're happy they're here tonight. I, I love you. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here, Brother LaVaris, my friend. And Brother Chris is somewhere. We're glad he's here, too. Praise God. And I'm glad to see Olivia over there. Sister John. I always love when she smiles, she brightens the room. And I like that. She sure does. She's got an effervescent personality. And we love that. God bless her for coming tonight. Look in your Bibles to Luke chapter 4, verses 16 and 21. I never take it for granted to stand behind the sacred desk and preach the word of the Lord. You never know when it will be your last time to preach, when it will be your last time to reach, when it will be your last time to try to rescue the perishing. And so it's a, it is a noble and a weighty matter to preach the word of God. He came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was, look at somebody and say, Jesus went to church. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. When he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book. He gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began to say to them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And for a little bit of night time tonight, I'm going to preach on this subject, the anointing and the flow. The anointing and the flow. Let's pray. Lord, I love you. Thank you for your people that are here, your, these visitors, God, and these saints of the Most High. I pray, Lord, you anoint our ears to hear and my lips to speak your words, God. Anoint us in the name of Jesus Christ. Everybody said in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you're seated in the presence of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord. The Bible lets us know that the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the water in the book of Genesis. The Spirit of the Lord is an active force. It's always in movement and always in motion and it always has a purpose. God's Spirit is a Spirit of purpose. Ezekiel had a great vision in chapter 47 of Ezekiel. Afterward, he brought me again to the door of the house. Behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the front of the house stood toward the east, and the waters came down from under the right side of the house, the south side of the altar. And then it says, he brought me out the way of the gate northward and led me about the way without to the altar gate by the way that looked from eastward. And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. So there were waters flowing out from this temple, from the house of God. And a man had a line in his hand, and he went forth, and he measured a 1,000 cubits, which is 1,750 feet. He brought me through the waters, and there were waters to the ankles. Then he measured another 1,000 cubits, and then there were waters to the knees. And again, he measured a 1,000 and brought me through, and the waters were to the the loins or to the waist and afterward he measured a thousand and it was a river that I could not pass over for the waters were risen waters to swim in everybody say waters to swim in waters to swim in a river that could be not could not be passed over this vision of Ezekiel these waters to swim in they are showing us the significance of a deepening spiritual life when you receive the Holy Ghost, the Bible says your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. When the church was born on the day of Pentecost, then waters began to flow from Jerusalem. 
And as they flowed out, they began to deepen. And someday those waters, bless God, are going to cover the whole earth. It is a long stream there at the temple, very shallow, but as it moves forward, as the Holy Spirit of God moves forward, His Spirit becomes more palpable, deeper and deeper and deeper. And that's how it ought to be in your personal life. The longer that you live for Jesus, the deeper your walk with Him becomes. The deeper the Spirit of God in your life is, and you begin to be able to find yourself in waters to swim in. This steadily deepening from the ankles to the knees to the waist, and then finally waters to swim in. How many times have we been the beneficiaries of such waters? We find ourselves overcome in the presence of the Lord, and His Spirit is so manifest that we just swim in the flow of His constant flow. Tonight we felt His presence. How many felt the presence of the Lord tonight during the song service? And we had waters tonight to swim in. I saw people as they began to worship the Lord tonight, some with raised hands, some with tears that flowed down their cheeks. I saw people speaking in tongues as they began to swim in the waters of the Holy Ghost. And God's presence is here tonight to heal somebody. God's presence is here tonight to touch your life and to give you peace and to bring you joy and to satisfy the longing in your soul. We used to sing a song that said, only Jesus can satisfy your soul. And that's true. Only Jesus, and the way he satisfies it is by giving you the precious Holy Ghost. I have the Holy Ghost tonight. How about you? I've been born again of water and of spirit. And the church was born on that day. Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost, those spirit-filled believers. And we have enjoyed His presence. Every time we come to the house of God, we should worship Him until we begin to feel the free flow of His Spirit. Because the Bible says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There's freedom for people. And it's almost like we go to our favorite swimming hole and we frolic there and we swim there and we rejoice and we celebrate in those waters. When I was a boy, I worked with my dad on plumbing jobs in the hot heat of the summer. It'd be hot working inside those houses on those new construction jobs. And in Indiana, where I lived at, it gets real hot. And what really makes it miserable is the fact that the humidity is so high. So we would leave sometime during the lunch hour. We always packed up subways, uh, subs from Kmart. Anybody remember the subs from Kmart? They used to be delicious. We would pack up our subs from Kmart, maybe some uh, watermelon must melt whatever honey do and get in there and some water and we'd we'd eat that in his little international truck that he worked it out of and then we go down to the creek near the job site him and I we just get in the, we didn't take our clothes off we just got in the water and cooled off there couldn't really there weren't waters to swim in in those creeks but they sure were cool on a hot day there's something satisfying about the spirit of God but there's more to the spirit of God and more to this river of life that we are in than just the satisfaction of our own spiritual highs. These waters carry with them a purpose for the anointed of God. And make no mistake tonight, if you have the Holy Ghost, you've been anointed by God. That's why we talk about, touch not my anointed do my prophets no harm. And we often speak of that in terms of don't talk about the man of God or the ministry. And that's true. You better keep your mouth off your pastor. If you haven't prayed about it, don't talk about it. In fact, pray about it and don't talk about it. But that's also, I believe, referring to anybody that has the Holy Ghost. Because once you have the Holy Ghost for the row, you've been anointed. And so we don't talk about people. Because they're the anointed of God. But there's a purpose to this anointing. Ezekiel, again, Ezekiel. Ezekiel's going into verse 6. He's talked about waters to swim in in verse 5. And then he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. The river that they're talking about here is the Dead Sea. The Salt Sea, if you will. That's the river that everybody believes was where... Uh, Sodom and Gomorrah were, and there's great salt there now. And the only thing that they can get out of that river today 
is that salt, you know, that sea. That's what they do now. There's no life there. It's all death. Some I've heard some say you can touch the water, you hold it, and it begins to sting your hand the longer that you hold it. So he said, Now when I return, and behold, at the bank of the river were very many trees on one side and on the other. Then said he unto me, These waters issue out toward the east country and go down through the desert and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. The Holy Ghost power that we have, the, the flow of the Spirit of God that's in us tonight, the anointing that we have, it can heal all the waters around us if we will allow it to, if, if we'll let it flow through us to other people. And that's what God has given you the power of the Holy Ghost for, to be witnesses about Him in all the world, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and under the uttermost parts of the earth. That's what Huntington is tonight. It's the uttermost parts of the earth, but that river is still flowing, and we are the conduits of that flow tonight. It said, it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, whithersoever the river shall come, shall live. And there shall be a great multitude of fish, because these waters shall come hither, for they shall be healed, and everything shall live, whether the river cometh. It shall come to pass that the fishers shall stand upon it, from in Gedi, even unto in Elglam. And they shall be a place to spread the forth their nets. Their fish shall be according to their kinds, as a fish of the great sea exceeding many. There is this healing process that takes place when the Holy Ghost inside of you begins to manifest itself through you and people begin to receive from you that power that God has placed in you to be a witness of his power and of his love and of his mercy. God has a purpose for you. The purpose of the Holy Ghost is not just to stand here and speak in tongues and run and dance and shout. The purpose of the Holy Ghost is that you would be witnesses and go out into the world and be what God wants you to be to reach the lost. That's the flow, the purpose. We are often, we're often, my wife talked about distracted. We have within us the greatest and most powerful gift that there is, the gift of the Holy Ghost, but we do not know sometimes how to let it flow. We, we leave the house of God. We, we spoke in tongues here. We worship here. We might speak in tongues in our car and even in our homes, but bless God, we're, 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 a little bit, we're a little bit fearful about letting it flow outside to other people. You've got to be able to get to a place where there's waters to swim in, and not just swimming in them, but then they begin to go down those banks and feed those trees. And the Bible says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. This Holy Ghost flow, the river of life that flows out of you is like a nutrient to all the trees on the sides of the river. It is powerful. And people that are purchased there, or they're, they're planted there, they will grow and they will be nurtured. But they need somebody that will be willing to be the conduit through which the Holy Ghost flows to them. He said, the ungodly are not so, but they're like the chaff, sister star, which the wind driveth away. I hear you now. I didn't hear you this morning. I was worried you were sleeping on me. It's like a chaff which the wind driveth away. That's an old inside joke. Bullshit. Let me just stop and say, Sister Star said I've gotten better because when she first came here, when I'd teach on Sunday morning, she'd fall asleep. And now she don't fall asleep no more. And I, I'm thankful, Sister Star. I have improved. So I'm glad when I hear your voice, it gives me hope. One guy told me the other day, he said, you get gooder and gooder. I said, just how bad was I to get gooder and gooder? But the ungodly are not so. They're like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. There is a riverbed, the riverbed of the Spirit moving. And some people's riverbed has draw, dried up. Because they have stopped letting the river flow through them. Wherever this river flows, there is healing. Wherever this river flows, there's growth. There's bounty. There's all manner of fish that are caught there. Where once the waters are polluted, 
and there was no, nothing that could be produced there, nothing that could grow there, nothing that could thrive there. Now, wherever that river goes, you're going to find that people are going to be busy reaping harvest and catching catches of fish. And don't you know those fish in the New Testament? They're talked about as fishers of men. Fish in the New Testament are symbols of men and women that come to Jesus. And, and when you have the Holy Ghost inside of you and you're a witnesses, you should be able to be able to bring in a great catch of fish. The Bible calls it a great draught, so much so that your nets are full. And you have to call other people to come and help you. I'm looking forward to the day where I have to call five and six people and say, would you come and meet me at such and such a place? I've got all these people that want to come to the house of God tonight. And they want the Holy Ghost and they want to be baptized in Jesus' name. And to hear the joyful response, I'd be happy to come and be a part of that. Now, the Spirit of God moving through the church, it brings life. And so I've come to ask you tonight, to admonish you, to speak to you and say, let the river flow. Let the river flow in your life. Don't dampen it. Don't put a dam up and stop it and just keep that big pool of water all to yourself. You just swim in there and yeah, I like feeling the goosebumps, and I love speaking in tongues and talking to God, and, and I love getting along with Him and being blessed by Him, but, but it's not just enough that I swim in the pools of the water. It, it's not designed to be a pool. It's designed to be a river that flows so you can reach people all around you. We used to sing a song, There is a river that flows from deep within. There is a fountain that Cleans my soul from sin. Come to these waters. There is a vast supply. There is a river that never shall run dry. The Holy Ghost River flowing in your life will not dry. If you'll just let the Lord be the Lord of your life. So Jesus goes to church one day. It was his custom. He had just finished a 40-day fast following his baptism in the River Jordan. He was full of the Holy Ghost, the Bible says. And he was handed a scroll of Isaiah as he sat there in that, in that synagogue. He began to read these words. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath anointed me to heal the brokenhearted. He hath anointed me to preach deliverance to the captive. He hath anointed me to preach the recovering of sight the blind. He hath anointed me to set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to do something for somebody else. I'm not merely a receiver of spiritual experiences whose only purpose is to keep them all to myself? Did God give you the Holy Ghost just so you can escape hell? No. And again, I say no, He didn't do that. The anointing flows through me. And I become a tributary, a river, a bridge between God and man because He hath anointed me. The anointing is from God. He hath anointed me. It is not a result of my own merit, but it's of his pleasure that he anointed me. I didn't do anything to derive this anointing. I didn't do anything to, to, that was so special. He said, oh, i got to give him the anointing. No, it was by his good pleasure that he anoints us. And he anoints us not to keep it to ourselves, but to help somebody else. He said, he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to share the good news of the gospel to those spiritual zeros, those spiritually bankrupt people who are deprived and deficient, they're spiritual beggars who have never felt the touch of God. He's anointed me to preach to those people. He's anointed me to tell them that Jesus has come to seek and to save them that are lost. And that's including them. Jesus has come to seek and to save everybody that's lost. And he has anointed me, and he has anointed you to preach that message to the poor. And anybody that doesn't have the Holy Ghost, anybody that's not born again of water and spirit is poor. 
She just didn't go to the fashionable and the rich, but to the poor. Those who exclusively pursue the rich and the so-called elite of society, and they only want the doctors and the lawyers and the, the high-income people, they're mostly doing that to get something from them. But Jesus went to the poor to give something to them. It was, a, it was a ministry for their benefit and not his. Now, I'm not saying don't go to the doctors. I'm not saying don't go to the lawyers. I'm not saying don't go to those who are, who've got the money. I'm not saying that because they're poor in their own way. But what I'm saying is if that's what you're doing it for, to get something from them, you missed God's calling a long time ago, and you've totally aborted the true purpose of the Holy Ghost inside of you. Because his purpose is to seek and to save everybody, regardless of your standing or who you are. So he said it was a ministry. It's a ministry. I've been anointed to preach the gospel to the poor. I've been anointed to talk to somebody about Jesus that's never heard about Jesus before. Or maybe they have heard about him, but it's been a long, long time. I, I got to tell you tonight, you've been anointed. Look at somebody and tell them, you've been anointed. He's anointed me. He hath anointed me to set at liberty them that are bruised. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There's freedom. Not only is Jesus Christ the Christ, He's also the Holy Spirit. Because the Spirit that's inside you is the Spirit that was in Christ. Amen? And so He's also the giver of that Spirit. And God is a Spirit, the Bible said. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And so when you begin to preach liberty to people, you let them know you have been oppressed for too long now, and God wants to set you at liberty. If you know somebody tonight in this building that has some kind of a situation where they are bound up, you can go to them and lay hands on them and let the anointing flow through you so they can receive liberty and freedom from that tonight. And it doesn't matter what it is that binds them. It doesn't matter what if it's a sickness or if it's a habit, it's a hurt, it might be a hang-up, it might be an addiction, whatever it is that binds them up, it might be some past thing that's caused them not to be able to worship God freely. But when you begin to pray for them and let the Holy Ghost work through you, you, used by the Spirit of God, become the conduit of their freedom tonight. He hath anointed me. It's a mistake to think that because you've been anointed that you'll automatically be led by God to the highest peaks of ministerial power. That you'll automatically have to bypass all the struggles of life and you've been, I've been anointed to preach the gospel so I'm going to get behind the biggest pulpit in town. No, no, you're going to find out that Jesus was anointed and then he was driven into the wilderness. He had to face a struggle in those 40 days of temptation. I don't believe he just had the temptation on that last day. I believe he faced temptation the entire time he was in the wilderness. We just know about that last day in which he fought the enemy and he gave him the word of God as his weapon. Listen, the word of God is your weapon tonight. You're going to be, uh, you're supposed to put on the whole armor of God, right? But then you're going to have the sword of the Spirit, which the Bible says is a two-edged sword. It is the Word of God. Anytime that devil comes with you, if you're armed with the Holy Spirit of God and the Word of God, there's no weapon that's formed against you that can prosper. So he said, he's anointed me. You're presently in your wilderness experience. Don't be bogged down by it. It's a sign. It's a sign to you that you are being prepped by God to be a vessel of his anointing. And so you should thank God for the wilderness. I said, well, bless God. That's not always easy, is it? When people turn on you, when people disappoint you, when your money's funny and you're broke, through no fault of your own. There's no fault in Jesus. He had been baptized in the river. There's a voice of heaven that said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And then he was driven. He's full of the Holy Ghost and he's driven into the wilderness. Led by the Spirit. The Spirit of God led him there. So don't think just because you're anointed you're not going to go through some stuff. But when you do, 
You understand that any time we read about a demonstration of anointing in the Bible, it was preceded by a trying and a crushing and a preparing of the vessel for the Holy Ghost flow. So I don't know what you're going through tonight. I don't know what you've been going through the last few weeks or months, but it has been a crushing because God is getting out of you that anointing and it's going to flow through you. People are going to recognize it. It is not the plan, the will, or the divine intent of God for us to hoard to ourselves these wonderful experiences of the Holy Ghost, these shouts of joy, this running and dancing, but He has sent me. What has He sent me to do? What has He anointed me to do? He's anointed me to heal the brokenhearted, not just to look at them, not just to weep and mourn with them, not just to feel sorry for them or to pity them. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. People that are broken and hurt and wounded, that are suffering great things, the power of the Holy Ghost working through me. It's not me that's doing the work. It's not you that's doing the work. It's the Holy Ghost working through you that does the work. That's why every time I pray, and I ask the Lord to work through me. I say, Lord, manifest your love through me. Manifest your power through me. Manifest your spirit through me. God, heal people through me. I am just the conduit. I'm just the tributary. I'm just the river for the flow of the Holy Ghost so that God can minister in the people's lives and be the healing water that heals all those people that are stuck in that Dead Sea experience of sin that they can't get out of where there is no life. But this river of water that we have, it brings life to people. If you're, the, if you're the conduit, if you're the tributary, if you're the river, then let it flow. Just let it flow. It has not sent me to folks who already have it made or that think they do. But he's, he sent me to he has anointed me. and He has sent me to preach deliverance to the captive. To preach recovering of sight to the blind. Not just the physically blind. Although we have seen the blind healed here, haven't we, Sister Phyllis? We've seen it happen. But to preach to those who are spiritually blind. There are men and women all over the city who have never seen the necessity of water baptism in the name of Jesus. You have been given a command by God and anointed to preach the, the, the preaching of the recovering of sight to those blind people. There are people in this city who have never, ever been filled with the Holy Ghost. They don't even know if there is such a thing as the Holy Ghost like the Bible says there is. And you have been given a mandate through the power of the Holy Ghost and the anointing resting upon you. See, it's not just a pastor's job. The purpose of the five-fold ministry is what? It's for the edifying of the body of Christ for the work of the ministry. It's necessary. It is the gift from God, the five-fold ministry, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. But you need all those guys, all those women, if they're a woman. You need all that. But you, as a saint of God, have been given those gifts in order that you would be built up and then you can go out and minister to people, to serve them. And the best way to serve somebody is to let the anointing work through you to preach to them the recovering of their sight. And then also, he's anointed me to set at liberty them that are bruised. To set them at liberty. This is what he has filled with his spirit to do. Out of your belly, the Bible flow, says, shall flow rivers of living water. Rivers. We sang a song in Sunday school when I was a kid. It's bubbling. It's bubbling. It's bubbling in my soul. Such singing and shouting since Jesus made me whole. It's bubbling. It's bubbling right here tonight. It's not just bubbling in this room tonight. In this service tonight, there are waters to swim in. But if we just dam up the doors, encircle everything, uh, it just becomes a pool. And the problem with the pool is that eventually, if it's not maintained properly, it becomes stagnant. The problem with so many people that have the Holy Ghost is because they don't live in the Spirit. They have the Holy Spirit, but they don't live in the Spirit. I talked about this morning, living in the Spirit means that you allow the fruit of the Spirit to manifest itself in your life. 
And you also allow the gifts of the Spirit to manifest in your life. That's living in the Spirit. Being the conduit through which God manifests His love, His joy, His peace. Not just to you, but through you to somebody else. Being the conduit through which when you lay hands on the sick, they get a gift of healing. They might need a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge. You might be walking down the road one day and a spirit of discernment comes upon you. You might be going down the street one day and, and God gives you a word for somebody they need right then. That's the Holy Ghost. Do not quench the flow of the Holy Ghost. Look at somebody just say, let it flow. Let it flow. Oh, yeah. Let it flow. It's the Holy Ghost in you. He's given you power, Brother Chris. It's delegated power. It's his authority that he has granted to you and through you to be that flowing river, to proclaim the good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them who are oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Right now is the Lord's favor. Because the Bible says today is a day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. Right? There, if you've ever been waiting on a good time to be the man or the woman of God that you've always wanted to be, stop waiting. Today is that day. Today is the day of salvation. Right now is the day that God wants to flow to you and through you as you become a witness. And that's when people can come and they can, the Bible says, with joy they shall draw water out of the wells of salvation. They get that joy because somebody shared it with them. That well is like a, it's not a cistern. A cistern just holds water. You have to keep on pouring water in it. But that water has some other source that comes through it. It's the same way with the river. You are in the river. You are the river because out of your belly flows this river of living water. Anybody in the church that has the Holy Ghost is anointed to do anything that God wants them to do. The only problem is you have to desire to do it. Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. We don't just need anointed preaching. But we need anointed deeds. Luke wrote to Theophilus, the former treatise, have I wrote to you all, Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. When you are really walking in the anointing, when you're really flowing in the Holy Ghost, you don't just teach, but you also have those deeds that follow behind you. They're not your deeds. It's the works of the Holy Ghost working through you. If you read your Bible, the front of the book of Acts, it says the Acts of the Apostles. It's not the Acts of the Apostles. It's the Acts of the Holy Ghost working through the Apostles. No Apostle himself ever healed anybody of any disease, but when he called upon the name that's above every name, like Peter said one day to that man that was at the temple, the gate beautiful, he said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And the Bible says immediately he was healed. And he walked up leaping and dancing and praising God. Why? Because he was anointed and because he had the power of the name of Jesus. You know who your source is for your power. It is Jesus Christ. And if you will trust him, he will lead you and guide you. Jesus of Nazareth. A man approved of good among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you. God is going to work through you. God will do miracles, wonders, and signs by you through his power if you will let him do it. Anointed preaching is common among us. How many times have you left Apostolic Life Cathedral and said, man, he sure did preach tonight. Oh man, I felt the anointing in that sermon this evening. But what we have a short supply is, is anointed deeds. We don't have a, a short supply of anointed preaching. But we have a short supply of anointed deeds. And it's not because God hasn't armed you with what you need. It's that we're too busy swimming in the waters instead of flowing down the river and being that minister of the gospel to somebody that needs Jesus. It says, in these signs, 
shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing that shall not hurt them, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You got to be a believer. You got to let the flow flow through you. You got to allow yourself simply to be the conduit. We need in 2023 a powerful ministry of God directed anointing that delivers people. Not self anointed, but God anointed. Quit guarding the Holy Ghost and simply let it flow. Look at your neighbor again and say, let it flow. Just let it flow. Hallelujah. Does anybody feel anointed tonight? Does anybody feel the power of the Holy Ghost? Does anybody believe that you have the same power that the apostles had? If you do, why don't you stand tonight if you feel that? If you feel that. That's anointing. I've been anointed by the Holy One. I lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Brother Francisco received the Holy Ghost this morning. He has been given a gift just like we all have. And today if he understood the power that's in him and the power of the name of Jesus, he right now, even as a new babe in Christ, could lay hands on the sick and they recover because the same Holy Ghost in me is in him. And so tonight, I, I just want to just wanna have a good old-fashioned prayer line. Is that all right? But none of the preachers are going to do laying on hands tonight. We're just going to pray where we're at. I want the saints of God who are anointed by God to come up front here. If you feel like you have enough Holy Ghost in you and enough faith in the name of Jesus, I want you to come up here and line up to pray for people as they come through that line. Anybody? Anybody going to be willing? There's one. Anybody else? Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. Come on down here. If you feel the anointings upon you, if you got the Holy Ghost, you believe your prayers are good enough to, amen, lay, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. <coughs> Hallelujah. That's all right. Now, if you have a sickness in your body, a need in your family, something that you got going on that nobody knows about, this is the time to come down here and be prayed for. Ladies and gentlemen, come on down here. I want you to line up in front of these other people here so we can make a little, I like a little, I like some things done decently and in order. This ain't pumped up. This is the anointing of God. This is the power of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Line up across here so people can get through. I want need you to line up and face across them. So half of you come in here and face like I'm facing. All right? There you go. I want Molly to pray for somebody tonight. She's got the Holy Ghost. There we go. All right. Scoot on down that way, ladies. If you've been, if you're sick in body, I want you to come on this side and go through that line. They have as much Holy Ghost in them as any man of God, any preacher of the gospel. They've been anointed. But, but what I want you to get tonight before we leave this house isn't that we just do this here. These are waters to swim in tonight. But when you leave this place, know that you've been commissioned by the power of the Holy Ghost to lay hands on the sick on, to people in public. Sister Marcy, you could do it in your office. Someone come to you and say, at the door. And then that, can I pray for you? I'm going to do something weird now. I'm going to lay my hands on you. You hear me? Play a song. Sing a song, Brother Danny. If you need a need tonight, come up here behind us. I need prayer tonight. That's why I'm in line. And God's going to do a work. Maybe you have a need in your family. Maybe you have a need on the job. Maybe it's in your body. Maybe you just need strength in the Holy Ghost. 
Don't be afraid to come on through here. Praise you God. You can use anything, Lord. You can use me. Take my hands, Lord. Take my feet. Touch my heart, Lord. Speak through me. You can use anything, Lord. You can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, take my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, take my feet. My heart, Lord, speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use Hallelujah. me. That's right. That's right. Come on down. If you can use anything, Lord, step you into can the use water tonight. Me. Step into the river. If you can Hallelujah. use anything, Lord, you Hallelujah. can use Bless your holy name. Take my hands, Lord. Take my feet. Touch my heart. Touch my heart, Lord. Speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. If you can use yes. anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, take my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Anything, Lord, you can use me. Lord, If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, take my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak through me. Hallelujah. If you can use anything, Lord. You can use anything, Lord. You can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord. Take my feet. Touch my heart, Lord. Speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Hallelujah. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, take my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. You guys want to go pray? Go ahead. You can use anything, Lord. Go ahead. You can use me. If you can use
Take my hands, Lord, take my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Hallelujah. Take my hands, Lord. Take my feet. Touch my heart, Lord. Touch my heart, Lord. Speak through me. Hallelujah. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Lord, let your blessings flow. If you can use anything, Lord, Hallelujah. you can use me. Man. I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. You can use anything, I Lord. Feel the flow tonight. Use me. Hallelujah. Take my hands, Lord. Take my feet. Touch my heart, Lord. Speak through me. If you can use. 